Hello, friends, and welcome to a special bonus episode of Misconceptions. I'm your host, David White. And Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, of course, we have our Christmas holiday special coming out right now, but I wanted to give you a, a bit of a double dose today because, I mean, it's Christmas, it's the day of giving gifts, and I wanted to give you a little bit of the actual misconceptions along with our holiday special. So, here you go. Last episode, I mentioned that our characters have gone through some changes. Uh, in between recording episodes, we got together and we had a character recreation session using the new uh, character creation rules from the City of Mist core rulebook, which was recently released. But in this episode, uh, I wanted to give the crew, the players, a chance to explain um, kind of what went on with the character recreation and explain how their characters have changed a little. I mean, they're, they're still the same characters that you know and hopefully love, but their, uh, their powers are a little bit different. They're a bit more streamlined. But before we get to the crew explaining what changed, I wanted to kind of um, describe the character creation process as it is described in the cool rules. This is going to be a, not exposition, I guess a rules heavy episode so if this isn't your cup of tea you don't have to listen to it you can go ahead and listen to the very fun Christmas holiday episode if you want uh, but this is for those who are more interested in the rules or want to know kind of what's happening behind the scenes with our characters so if you want to stop listening go ahead if you want to keep listening let's go but character building in um, City of Mist is like most of the game, it's very narrative-based. So the first thing that you do when you're picking out a character is you think of what your character is. What are they during the daytime? What do they know they are? What's their routine? What's their life? Things like that. What is their mundane life? Uh, and this mundane life is uh, described as logos. Uh, and there are two different types of themes that a character will have. They will have the logos side, and they will have the mythos side. Like I said, the logo side is their everyday life, what they know. Their mythos is um, their mystical side. Well, maybe not mystical, but their mysterious side, where their powers come from. Um, and so when you're thinking of what kind of character you want to make, you need to think about these two aspects of your character. In City of Mist, there are things called mythoi. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right, mythoi. Uh, and they are... The definition of mythoi is kind of different, but it's basically stories, legends, mythologies, things like that, that exist up in this plane separate from the city, but they want to manifest their story in different ways. So, for example, Robin Hood, um, he could manifest himself in different ways. He could manifest himself as somebody who wants to rob from the rich and give to the poor, uh, and he can manifest that through, you know, old Bob down the street. But then, in the meantime, he's also manifesting his story through Jim. And Jim is like this uh, this really great archer. And so, different aspects of different mythoi can come out in different people in different ways. So, whenever you pick your character, you think of the Logos, their everyday life, and you think of their mythoi, their mystical side, where their powers come from. And once you have that, you pick four themes for your character. Uh, these themes can be logos or they can be mythos. You need to have at least one of each. For each theme type, mythos and logos, there are different themes. Like in mythos, you could have expressions, so like shooting fireballs from your hand or ice from your eyes or something like that. Um, and then in your logo side, you have like your routine, like where you go to work and things like that. And so once you have a theme picked out, you turn to that specific theme book which is, it's not a book yet. I believe that there will be physical theme books released for each different theme in the future. But right now, it is just a section of the book, the core rule book. Uh, and you pick that theme, and then you answer questions about your theme. So, for example, let's say that your theme is something like a rock troll or, or something with really tough skin. And so you think, you know, this tough skin is an important part of my mythos and it would be a part that would manifest in me. And so you choose the Bastion uh, theme set. And uh, that theme is like you have a shield or you're invulnerable or something like that. Um, but then you answer a question 
to get tags. And I'll explain what tags are in a second. But to kind of explain what kind of questions you answer for your themes, here's the here's one of the questions that you have to answer for Bastion. What quality or ability granted by your mythos most often protects you? So you think about the answers to that question. Uh, going with our example for a rock troll, I'm going to say um, can grow stone skin. Or maybe just stone skin. And so that's my first tag. And what tags are is they have a kind of a dual, uh, a dual responsibility, I guess. Because one is they are descriptive little elements for your character. Like, what does your character look like? I have stone skin. But it's also powers. Uh, these are powers and things that you can add to your role. Uh, and the way City of Mist is played is you roll 2d6, and then you add as many tags as you can to your roll. So let's say my rock troll character is trying to avoid damage. Well, I take my 2d6, I look at my theme sheet, and I say, I'm going to use my stone skin because it's going to protect me from damage. And so I roll it, I add one to it, and then I compare to a, you know whatever move I'm wanting to do. You repeat this process, you get at least three tags in every theme. And along with picking powers and descriptive abilities that might help you, each theme has their own weakness as well. Uh, and these are weakness tags. And when these are activated, they actually take away from your role. Um, but for example, let's go back to our rock troll idea. I'm going to pick one of the, uh, the weakness tag questions from the Bastion theme. Uh, let me see which one I want to do. So I'm going to answer this question about my powers. How do your defensive powers affect your appearance? So I'm going to think, uh, I'm a rock troll. I'm probably not very pretty. I have this rock growth all over my body. Uh, I'm going to say that my weakness tag is monstrous. And so whenever this ability could negatively impact my life, like maybe I'm in a crowd, maybe uh, I'm trying to do something or influence somebody, but all they can see is this monstrous rock troll character in front of them, I would take a minus one to my roll. So with this, uh, this faux character creation we've been going through with my rock troll character, uh, we've focused a lot on his mythos side. Well, let's switch gears and let's focus on his mundane side, his logo side. Uh, I'm... I'm thinking he needs a job, uh, a routine. So I'm going to go to the routine theme book, and let's see. Um, he he doesn't look pretty. He's pretty monstrous. So I would need somewhere where appearance wouldn't really affect my job, somewhere that I could just come in, do my job, and get out. And so I'm going to put a, uh, let's say, some, some menial labor, like a construction worker or something like that. Um, so, I'm going to do routine. My job is a construction worker. The first question that I would have to answer for this uh, theme tag is, what do you do with your time? And so I think about that. What's my job? Um, I guess I already said what my job is. It's a, it's a construction worker. So, that would be my first power tag underneath this, uh, this logo's theme. And I'm, I'm having some fun with this theoretical character creation process, so I'm going to go ahead and answer another uh, power tag question underneath this routine. Uh, and I'm going to answer this one. What sort of tools do you use? Okay, I'm a construction worker. I'm, I'm probably this big, burly dude. And you know what? I really like the idea of my character having a sledgehammer. So underneath this theme book uh, for my routine, I have... My first one, my first power tag is a construction worker. My second one would be a sledgehammer. Uh, dang, this dude is a uh, this dude's pretty beefy. Uh, I would have to go back and think of a new title for it though. But that's an example of a logos power tag, uh, and logos power tags can be just as effective as mythos power tags. Maybe they won't be as flashy. Maybe they will. It depends on what your logo side is. But your character will pull from these two sides of himself, or herself, mythos and logos, whenever they are confronting problems or trying to solve the mystery of, of the city. I really like this character creation process because you can look at all these different questions and they might, they might make you think of your character in a way that you haven't thought before. And so 
you take this idea that you have and it can get more fleshed out as you go with it, which is what happened to our crew. And you're about to hear kind of how they fleshed out their characters a little bit more. Like whenever we made the characters, we, we made very rough characters and, uh, compared to the rules that we have now, they were just off the wall bonkers. So I'm very glad that we have the new rules and that we can, uh, look at these rules and, you know, make better characters. So now that I've given you an overview of how character creation works, we're going to go to the players and we are going to see, um, what, what tags did they choose and what they have to say about their new characters. Since we recorded our last episode, we have had a character recreation session. Uh, what that means is our characters have kind of changed. They're still the same, but uh, I mean, with the new rules that came out for City of Mist, we had more streamlined character creation rules. We kind of cleaned up our tags that maybe some didn't make sense and we got some new tags. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go around the table and I'm going to let the players talk about a, a little bit about what their characters have changed and how they've changed. Uh, and I think I speak for everybody when saying that I think the new character creation rules are really great. And I think everybody's pretty happy with uh, their character 2.0 or maybe 1.5. But anyways. I'll go. Okay. Um, okay, so I have Faye. Um, and really, like, I have the same Mythos and Logos tags. Um, but, like, the power tags within those have just gotten a little bit more defined. Um, and then my my Mythos has changed a little bit. So now, instead of, like, entangling vines and uh, mind control over nature, which, like, we're basically the same thing. I have plant growth, the more the merrier. So, um, you know, having more stuff around means I can have a stronger effect. Um, herbal infliction, so I can use that for like poisons and truth serums and stuff. And then reason with animals. Um, so we felt like mind control over animals didn't quite fit. So the reason with animals will give me the ability to talk to them and connect to them. Um, and then the rest are kind of basically the same. Um, Still a teacher, so, you know, like, focusing on kids and stuff like that. Um, still interested in social justice, and so there's those tags about injustice and stuff. And then um, still the whole Robin Hood line, so mm -hmm. um, there's some tracking and stuff with that. Yeah, and something like, I mean, I knew this about the city, but we didn't really take it into account when we were making our characters. But the fact that the Mythoi, like, live up in this ethereal plane, and they affect everyone in the city, and, like, the different people are manifestations of the different mythoi. Um, but like now we, we really had to like backwards engineer all the characters. Like this is what they are, but like what mythos could we connect them to? Uh, and I think really the most backwards engineering we had to do is with Bill because it was really hard finding a, a mythoi to connect his tattoo manipulation to, but we found one. And even if it's loose, a loose interpretation of that mythoi, I think it still works. Um, but yeah, so like now we know like you're connected to Maid Marian and that Mythoi and Robin Hood and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Who's next? I'll go. Okay. Uh, with my character, we kind of switched around. It, it's still the same, like hacking and, um, kind of like half human, half cyborg, uh, type thing, but we just kind of switched around, uh, some of the tags the, for me, the incapacitator gun used to be just a tag, uh, but now it is a a theme. A theme, um, just because I use it so much that it would make more sense for it to be a theme, and so some of the different things that it has going on uh, can help me fight better uh, and more efficiently. And then it was also just making my uh, day job, Pascal and Associates, more of a well, yeah, more just a better theme. And so those were uh, made to be, I guess, more well-rounded than they were in the first uh, the uh, first theme card sheet. Uh, but the, in, the hacktivist uh, is still relatively the same, and then the digital data implants that I had are pretty much the same. 
I think Rin's character went through the most overhaul with with all the characters. Like I don't think you have your uh, your lenses anymore, do you? No. Well, uh, the lenses are now like transferred to <coughs> scanner vision, which was an extra power tag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, just the I, I guess the digital data implants. So There's just like more specific specificity. Specific. Specificity. Specific. Yep. yep, that word. There's just like more specific about, I guess, what I'm using that tag for, mm-hmm. just so we can. It's less generic and more specific mm-hmm. uh, for that theme, uh, just because it seemed like an easy, um, easy tag to apply that I applied to pretty much every move that I made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Rin got changed. A lot. I mean, he's still the same person, but like, we took away your self-made cyborg theme and replaced it with uh, your incapacitator gun. So that's mm-hmm. a theme by itself now. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see a lot of more versatile tags coming out of uh, Ren's uh, incapacitator gun now, instead yeah. of just like one tag for that gun. Yeah, and there's there's different things I can do with the gun mm-hmm. uh, that are fleshed out in a theme, um, whereas like the self-made cyborg was kind of transformed into digital data implants mm-hmm. and meshed with, I forget what the other theme was. Um, it but, was, it was artificial intelligence and self-made cyborg were your oh, two yeah. mythos themes. Yeah. And so, so those were just kind of combined because mm-hmm. they were pretty much the same thing, kind of, sort of. So, yeah. And you still, so I should say that Rin is the only one with two mythos themes uh, mm-hmm. Everybody else has one mythos themes and three logos. Uh, so, I mean, rules wise, that means that everybody is a touched except for Rin, who is a borderline. Uh, and I mean, really, at the in the grand scheme of things, that doesn't mean too much. But uh, yeah, just just that I'm half and half rather yeah. than I'm more mythos in the party yeah. than everyone else. Yeah, more connected to the mythos. Yeah, yeah. All right, who's next? I'll go next. Um. So I have Esther, and really not a whole lot changed because I'm the GM's wife and I'm stubborn. <laughs> um, but I will say that in creating the or recreating the characters um, with the rule book and everything, it helped me think through my character a little bit more than I had before. Like everybody else had kind of thought through it. And again, I'm the GM's wife, so I slack. And so. Um, I was able to think through it a little bit more. The one area where I had changes was in my routine um, with the, um, I went from bartender to bar owner. Um, And so some of the stuff in there got changed up a little bit. Um, My weakness tag changed there. Um, But then also under my defining relationship, which is daddy's girl, um, we added a power tag, which I'm pretty excited about, which is hobby the cop, Hmm. um, which I think will, be beneficial because I was already using hobby and mm-hmm. now I can actually count so now it's it. like something you could actually include on your roles. Right. Um, so, um, you know, I'm excited about that. But other than that, um, she's pretty much the same kind of thought through the mythos a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah. And you mentioned weakness tags. <laughs> and one of, one of my favorite things that came out of this was more concrete weakness tags because I'm – I want to play, or I wanted to play more into those because this game is supposed to be about you choosing what do you keep, your logo side, the side of you that you know, your everyday side, or this mythos side that is connected to the ethereal and stuff you don't know and this mystery. And so now with specific weakness tags, uh, I can more readily make you choose between those two things, and that will lead to some interesting character development, I think. Uh, as you either choose to be more in touch with what you know or more in touch with what you want to know. And then on to Bill, who, if you follow us on Facebook or Twitter, you saw my post about Bill or Jaime still refusing to give Bill a last name. Uh, so, yeah, Bill without a last name. My character's name, he does have a last name. <laughs> okay, what is it? His name is Bill <laughs> Ol. <laughs> First name, Bill. Last his name, His friends Ol. call him Bill. Oh, okay. good. Interesting. A, and acquaintances. So, Bill had absolutely no changes. And <laughs> if they convince you that 
there are changes, it's because it's part of the conspiracy. Oh my gosh. Um, now, so, so Bill lost his accent. Just kidding, I can't do that. I changed a couple of things. For instance, my tattoos still do rad stuff, and they're going to continue to. Mm-hmm. Um, unless I'm dead. Which hopefully <laughs> it doesn't happen anytime soon. Um, but my powers come from Akat, who is the Mayan god of tattoos. And even though we talked about kind of reverse engineering and stuff, it works well. Like yeah. The tattoos that he provides his mm-hmm. subjects are like mythical. It's yeah. just maybe not exactly how we're employing them, but whatever. Yeah. We, and then we found out like that he's also like the Mayan god of life and fertility and stuff like that, which could be... Bill is very fertile. That is... <laughs> Oh my god. That's not what I was talking about. (laughs) But But, uh no, like indirectly uh following your like trying to get your family back and opposing Jeremiah, who I don't know if anybody's picked up on the hints yet, is obviously connected to death. That's fair. So like a battle between life and death. So it kinda worked out really well. Uh Mm -hmm. fortuitous as it were. But anyways, keep going with your your talk. And we, we kind of I really liked the um the character recreation because we got to explore like questions about our powers that we didn't have to mm-hmm. talk about or think about before. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if there's limits on my powers. So mm-hmm. that's reflected in my mm-hmm. mystery. Um, and my weakness tag makes a little more sense mm-hmm. and it almost coincides with the mystery. What are the limits of my power? I don't know. So one of my weaknesses is if I try to exert too much, then it could hurt me. Yeah. Um, we changed up a little bit of um, the routine where it used to be kind of, a lot of things were vague. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now they're more concrete mm-hmm. because we can't deal with gray areas apparently. Because I would there's manipulate a rule. them and use them to There's a rule in the book that says, do not allow your players more than one broad tag. And like Bill's first character sheet was nothing but broad tags. <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> Thrived on it. Um, but yeah, so I'm an, I'm an employee of the Golden Flamingo, but that serves two roles in that I'm a card dealer and an enforcer. Mm-hmm. So it, it has to do with being sly, being able to tell if people are lying, mm-hmm. um, and also being a kneecapper or like an enforcer. Mm-hmm. And the weakness tags, because this is something that has come up multiple times, Mm -hmm. is that at any point in time, Jeremiah can call me and I like have to come back because Mm -hmm. of something that comes Mm -hmm. later in my description. I'm a gambler. I'm compulsive, risk averse, good at bluffing, and I've had to talk my way out of situations. But I also don't know when to walk away, so that could get me in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And... There was a really interesting type of um, logos called Mission. So I had to take that. Um, And it's just about my persistence to, like, get my family back and the things that I've learned on this, like, journey and, like, what motivates me. Um, But it also means that I, like, am always doing something. Like, there's not, there's there's no downtime. Mm Mm-hmm. Because of how much is on the line, so maybe, maybe a little insomnia is involved. Who knows? And I, that's that's really the major overhaul um, yeah. that we did. It, it just it's making things flow better. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, everybody basically sounds. I mean, I think everybody's pretty excited about the new power tags and new streamlining. So. Uh, I don't know. We were all really excited about the book coming out. I can't wait to have the physical copy. But also, I think uh, I think this will be great for the show. I think it will really improve kind of the story and character development and everything like that. Um, another aspect of the new rules and the character recreation system was um, help and hurt points. And help points, uh, you may spend those to basically help one of your allies do something like give them a boost over fence, help them recover damage, something like that. Uh, but in hurt points, uh, you're not really hurting your ally, but you're keeping them from doing something destructive, 
or you're just stopping them from doing something that they want to do and that you don't want them to do. Uh, help and hurt points are accrued differently, so your help points don't cancel out your hurt points. But anyways, um, usually during character creation, you just get hurt points, and usually it's assumed that your your characters have like been working as a crew for a while. But the Misconceptions crew met uh, after the series started so they didn't like have a background of hurt hurt and help points to go on and also we didn't have the cool rules then but anyways uh we're gonna go around the table and the players are going to say like what character has had the biggest impact on their their character so far in the story whether it has been good or bad um and then depending on what that is they'll get a hurt point on that person or a help point on that person. So somewhere on your sheet, you should have crew, and your the names of your crew members should be there. Um, and I think I know Ren did it, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But everybody else, if you don't have your crew member names in that slot on the first page, <coughs> go ahead and write their names in there. Um, and whoever wants to start off with the help and hurt points, uh, go ahead and go when you're ready. So this is like a way that they affect us? Yeah. So who has had the biggest influence on your character so far in the story? I feel like Bill has had the biggest influence of, and I don't know whether it's good or bad, because sometimes it works out really well and other times not so much, but I feel like impulsivity is like a thing that can sometimes help, but often, but sometimes like hurts us because we, what do you think, Bill? Would impulsivity be a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. It's my weakness tag for gambler. Mm. So maybe a bad thing for mine. Yeah. Well, this would be um, like each individual character picks another character to take a point on. Mm. Oh, so I would choose Bill to take on a help point. Yeah. Or maybe we could do it like this. So we could go down the line and you could say like, so Esther starts. So Faye, should she get a help or hurt point uh, in that column? What about Rin? What about Bill? So That's what let's I do it like that. We so we could do. fill okay. out, and each person could have either help point or hurt point. And as we keep going, um, we'll we've been get more and more. Long yeah. For that. Yeah. So instead of just having a help or hurt point on one individual, um, so who wants to start that and go down the list and see, like, what effect that person has had on them, help or hurt? I I can. Okay. Um, if, I, I'm, if I'm understanding correctly. So, like, Esther, definitely a help point for me. Yeah, I would agree. she helps with, like, Robin Hood and, mm-hmm. like, first episode. So go ahead and put a plus one next, or underneath her, or help. You got uh, it. Next to Esther. Cool. Um, Ren is definitely going to be a hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Um, because we end up fighting and, like, making things take longer because I'm constantly, like, fighting with him about okay. things. Okay, so a hurt point on Rin. Mm-hmm. And Bill's kind of up in the air for me. But I think I'm going to go with help, because the last few episodes we've really been able to help each other. Okay, so uh, one help point for Rin. Or, uh, Bill. Bill. Good grief. <laughs> uh, I don't know any of the characters. You should have had your coffee and Cheerios. All right, who's next? I'll go next. Okay. Um... So Faye is obviously a help because we're always having to rein in the boys. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So she gets a plus one in for real help. life and yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, sorry that was more real life than anything else. Okay. Um, aren't y'all glad you have us? Um, and then Ren probably a hurt. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, he's helpful a lot, but he. Okay. Drives so Esther a little crazy. One help for Faye and one hurt for Rin. Mm-hmm. What about Bill? That's another Didn't tough one. Didn't you slap me at some point? No. Mm. She punched Rin. I did punch oh, Rin, like, the first weird. episode. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurt. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because you bounced off the head. Uh-huh. Um... Who was it that I was working with the day that we were at the apartment complex? 
Like, who was I partnered with at that point? You were with Bill. Was it Bill? Yeah. So he's probably a help because there's times when the two of us are kind of able to, like, I don't know, muscle up and Okay. So uh, done. Help point? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead and put those in there. All right. What about y'all? Um, I'm going to put Bill as a help point because he's often the person that I'm with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think I'll put Faye as a hurt point. Uh, cause I, th- I feel like we have the most conflict. Okay. Um, that Faye disagrees with like 99% of the things that I do. <laughs> uh, but I would put Esther as a help point. Yeah. Uh, because while we do disagree, uh, I feel like we mesh together well. Yeah. And also you have thematically helped her in the past, like upgrading her van and things like that. Mm-hmm. So then should I... So then should I change him to a help? I mean, I was kind no. of on the fence. Yeah, I mean, you put it. That's what you got. Later on, you could decide, you know, he was helpful, so now he gets a help point from me. Um, okay. And Bill, what about you? Honestly, I think that everyone's been, like, from my perspective, been pretty helpful. Like, Faye heals us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, Esther lets us use her bar and drives us everywhere and doesn't charge gas money. Um, <laughs> That's so, gonna change. <laughs> Only because the bar is in the red. But and like Ren's goofy, but we're usually like a wrecking crew. So like, for, I think from my character's like perspective and like. So a help point on everybody. I think so. Okay. I was kind of. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Maggie just jumped up on my legs, but I didn't know she was there, and so I thought one of y'all was like putting your feet on me. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> I was half expecting Bill to be like, everyone is a hurt, hurt point. point. Yeah, that's what I thought it was going to be, too. Yeah, Bill came out uh, honestly helpful for everybody, uh, which is which is kind of surprising. I thought people would take hurt points on him. I think Esther was helpful for everybody, too. Maggie gets okay. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Faye was, too, wasn't she? <laughs> well, leave it to Yeah, with Ren. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, those are the the help and hurt points. It's because we've been it's been so long since we played last. Yeah. Now, how do we like activate the help and hurt points? Like, oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Literally. Like, is it going to be something that I like add to a roll? I I, really I will to. look up exactly how to use help and hurt points, but for right now, I'm going to house rule that it's like once per session you could activate your help or hurt point <coughs> to help that person. Uh, and you have, like, you can do that as many times as you have a point on them. So if you have one, you could use this once to give a plus one to their role or whatever. And is it something, like, I decide for somebody else or, like, yeah. I decide I'm going to activate my so plus Rin's, one for So Ren's trying to do this thing. You decide I'm going to help Ren, so I'm going to give him my help point. And then you use it for that session, and he has your help point. Uh that is how we will house rule it until I can find the exact definition of how to use it. Or that might be the way to how to use it. I don't know. Cool. That sounds reasonable. Okay. I'm going to stop recording now. And for anyone who is curious about how help and hurt points actually look, I did look it up after this session. but uh, I, And I had to you know dig around for it a little bit. But it was on page 244 of the core rulebook. And... Uh, the way you use help and hurt points is basically the same way you use juice whenever you use the change the game move. And uh, so that can be used to burn tags to give people uh, statuses or remove statuses or, or things like that. Um, so that is how you use help and hurt points. But anyways, thank you for listening to this episode of Misconceptions. It was short, uh, pretty heavy on the rules. Uh, I'm sorry if this disappointed some of you that are more interested in the narrative side of things, but don't worry because you still have a very long Christmas holiday episode to listen to that is very much so narrative, and uh, we'll be back with our next episode of Misconceptions at the first day of 2018. And here is to 2018 being a year filled with good feelings, with peace and love, and hopefully a lot of gaming with a lot of great people. That's all for this week's episode. We'll see you next time. Keep it nerdy, y'all.